Another day, another BBC scandal. This one, if it proves to be true, has all the hallmarks of all the other messes the secretive state broadcaster has got itself into on a monotonously regular basis. When trouble is brewing, what does Auntie Beeb do? She battens down the hatches and tries to keep it under wraps. It took 25 years, a quarter of a century, before we, the licence fee payers, finally found out the truth. Bosses knew that the ace reporter who persuaded Princess Diana to reveal her marital secrets in that bombshell interview was, in fact, little more than a conniving con man who used forgeries and lies to weave an evil web of deceit. When Martin Bashir's underhand techniques were at long last revealed, the BBC was forced to issue a groveling apology and it led to the humiliation of former Director General Lord Tony Hall, whose investigation into the affair was described as, and I quote, woefully inadequate. Disgracefully, after Bashir quit for America, the same BBC suits who shamefully guarded his secrets went on to hire him back as religious affairs correspondent, of all things. You would have thought by then that bosses at the Beeb might have learned their lesson. But incredibly, not even the uber shambles of the appalling Jimmy Savile saga appears to have taught them that honesty really is the best policy. So heinous were the ex-Radio 1 DJ's serial crimes that even the BBC's own Newsnight programme launched an investigation. And after reporters on the flagship show comprehensively established that one of the biggest names in showbiz was a prolific sex offender on a monstrously epic level, what did BBC executives do? They canned the Newsnight story and suppressed it so that they could carry on with a festive tribute to the late not-so-great Saville, a special commemorative episode of Jim Will Fix It, hosted by TV favourite Shane Ritchie. Happy Christmas, everyone. Subsequently, the journalists who complained about the shelving of their important story all left the Beeb. One of them, Merrion Jones, stormed... There is still, sadly, a small group of people at the BBC who think that the only problem with Savile was that it was exposed and if it had stayed hushed up, everything would be fine. In other words, don't tell the licence fee payers, take their money and keep them in the dark. That's not acceptable. Where is the transparency? And now the BBC is in deep trouble again for what looks like the same old reason. Whatever the truth of the allegations that a major male star paid a vulnerable teenager thousands of pounds for sordid pictures, they were made on May the 19th and no one knew a damn thing until they hit the front pages seven weeks later. And if it transpires that in their time-honoured fashion, the corporation's executives dragged their heels and covered up, they will be held to pay, as usual. We, the public, haven't been told what actually happened. Despite handing over £159.50 for our outrageously expensive licence fees, we're always the last to be informed. But who knows? It could be that the Biebers behaved impeccably throughout this escalating crisis. But given the seriousness of the accusations, seven weeks later, apparent inactivity seems extraordinary. Former Home Secretary Priti Patel says the BBC's response was derisory and Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves declared that it is very concerning that the star at the centre of the storm wasn't taken off air the moment the alleged victim's mother lodged her complaint. Instead, he wasn't suspended for nearly two months on Sunday, the day after the Sun's exclusive. Now the police have been called in and this sorry saga looks set to plunge the state broadcaster into a catastrophic nightmare. And while we contemplate the possibility that a household name betrayed the nation's trust with acts of shocking depravity, there's one question I have to ask. Is this what we pay our licence fee for? Is it, JJ? It seems so crazy and bizarre that they haven't learned anything from the past, the BBC, mm. and we're back in the same situation that we've been in with them in the past. But 
I'm not playing devil's advocate here, but I was so confused when I heard that it was illegal to send or to ask for pictures to be sent from someone who's over the age of 16, yeah, but below um, the age of 18. Under the age yeah, of 18. That's, that's yeah, that's what I was saying. I know this sounds terrible, and I actually would like to know what actually transpired from the moment they got that complaint to what they've done now. Because I think that's really the crux of the issue, not actually what this individual in question did. Because I think if you're old enough to have sex at 16, you should be old enough to send a picture of your naked body to whoever, and it shouldn't be illegal, which looks like the offense in question. I don't care about the well, level of- The alleged of the offense, we well, don't ex know. Exactly, we don't that's, know the, that's what it looks like. But that like. is against the law. But the, I, I think the bigger question is what the BBC did do. I don't think the, the, the main issue is what this person did or didn't do in their free time, because I'm not hearing really heinous crime being committed here. Maybe mm. maybe there's more to it, I don't know. But I think the bigger question is, what did the BBC actually Well, do? when you say heinous crimes, I mean, if these allegations are true uh, and money was being paid to a 17-year-old for sex pictures, well, then that's, the question, against the know, did, that's against the law. Did the presenter know this person was 17? That's one question. Well, that doesn't and get also, that. Ignorance no, no, is no, no defence. No, no, but the thing, no, but it didn't. Look, look no, it Acon. isn't. It isn't. Well, it's it not matters. actually it up matters. for debate. It matters. It matters. <laughs> It doesn't it matter. matter. Yes, it it's does. irrelevant. It does. It's it does irrelevant. Matter. It does matter because it does matter. Why? You mean you think you can go in and say, I didn't know you were 17, then you're all right? Well, no, that doesn't mean well you're all not all right. right. You're not I, all right. I, I, I it's it not really matter. a debate. <laughs> this is a fact. It's true. It's true. I think it matters. I mean, do you think a major household name, a trusted individual on the BBC should be going around behaving like this? Uh, uh, Esther thinks it's all right. <laughs> I think Absolutely it's, I think not. It's a valid question to ask. Absolutely and not. also, this presenter also sent pictures of their own nudes as un you know distasteful and as ugly as they may have been. So you know it, there was clearly a relationship there. It wasn't just you know this person getting paid to but, send nudes. It was you, you the fact, get some nudes the fact back that too. This, the parent contacted the BBC and complained about it, and BBC did nothing. It this seems. is the, it okay, seems, again. Yeah, we've got to thing. frame this that these are all allegations. We don't yeah. know exactly what happened, but you're right, JJ. That is the implication. Mm. Uh, it is that this mother, we know this much, she did complain to the BBC on May the 19th. Mm. Not only that this major star was enticing her child, we don't know the uh, gender of the child, enticing her child to give sex pictures to this major star, but also that uh, she said this was uh, funding this kid's drug habit, a crack yeah. habit. So all in all, if these allegations are true, it's a disaster for this star, obviously, and a disaster for the state broadcaster. But if then, as you say, JJ, they just didn't really do anything for seven weeks, yeah. because that is the chronology of this story, that. Uh, allegedly, the mother, after six and a half weeks of getting nothing from the BBC, phoned up the son. And let's stress, she hasn't had any money from the son. Yeah. She did this to get this story out. So yeah. they can't turn around and say she's just trying to make money. Yeah. Uh, so if they dragged their heels, if they were not extremely vigilant the moment they got this very serious allegation, mm -hmm. then, as I said earlier today, not only... Uh, will deputy heads roll, but heads will roll. That's quite rare at the BBC. They usually yeah. fire underlings, yeah. but senior people will lose their jobs. Do you not find it surprising that after what happened with Jimmy Savile, they didn't have a more robust well, process quite. in place that's the to, point. to investigate <laughs> these things very quickly? I mean, the fact that we're even questioning this, that's what I find surprising. Yeah. I mean, the moment you they, they received this, there should have been something. We should have heard that, you know, yeah. there was a, a large-scale investigation going on in the BBC. We don't know what it's mm. concerning. Yeah. But it's 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 just weird. It's, yeah. You know, th do they think these things will never yeah. happen again? Well, quite. I mean, I, I, sorry to be boring about this, but we do have to keep saying we don't quite know well, yeah, exactly. exactly what happened. Uh, but if it's what we think it is, mm -hmm. that this mother made this very serious complaint and the BBC didn't do very much, uh, then you're quite right, Esther. You think, well, didn't you learn anything from Jimmy Savile? Didn't you learn anything from Martin Bashir? Think yeah. about Martin Bashir. The BBC sat back and took all the plaudits, all the awards, mm -hmm. all the compliments, all the glory yeah. for that bombshell interview with Princess Diana and a number of executives at the corporation knew that that had been achieved. That interview was achieved through underhand methods, which, by the way, actually technically are illegal. You can't use forgeries and lies to persuade yeah. people to do things. Yeah. But they didn't go down the criminal route. But they knew this yeah. and they didn't tell us. That's a scandal. It absolutely is a scandal. And actually, I'm not saying we should get rid of the BBC, 
but surely we need to have a much more open relationship with them. So maybe we, the people, and are appointing the people who are yeah. at the BBC, the yeah. ones who are in charge, rather than it being Boris Johnson. Yeah. But then, well, would, that, well, would that really change anything? Because that's another popularity contest, right? It's yeah. who you like. Because you don't actually know someone's the BBC character is run by them. Guardian Reading, Tofu, <laughs> tofu Eating, Poshos. Well, that I is think they, the they you've been hanging around with me too much. You really oh have. I agree with you. Uh, it is now time for a bad ad. Harvey, want anything special for your birthday? Just a decent cup of coffee. You're kidding. I'm serious. Honey, your coffee's undrinkable. That's pretty harsh. Well, so's your coffee. You know, the girls down at the office make better coffee on their hot plates. Well, see you later. Hey, great coffee. It's instant Folgers. Doesn't it taste good as fresh perked? Better. Better than those girls make at the office. Honey, their coffee can't hold a candle to yours. <laughs> Somewhere in the world, a feminist head just exploded. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was going on there? What were they going to do I, after that kiss well. on the chair? What, what, were they going up to the bedroom or something like that? Well, they, might, they, they might not need to go up to the bedroom, that's Kevin. That's disgusting. Well, it's America. It's bound to be a bungalow. <laughs> they don't like stairs in America. Uh, have you ever had Folgers coffee? Never even heard of it. won't get yeah. you sex. <laughs> tell you, you never that. know. Uh, Listen. Uh, it it's, it, it's not the loveliest coffee I've ever had. Really? Oh, you've had it? Yeah, well, it's still a big brand in America. Oh, oh OK. What, what does it taste like? Uh, coffee. It ta <laughs> tastes like... No, no, it tastes like diner coffee. You, you know, you, you go into diner, and yeah. you know, like... Uh, oh, God. All those... Uh, like Denny's and all that. Yeah. And they go, you get tapi up coffee. And you go like this, it's like, that's not coffee, that's sort of brown liquid. <laughs> with no discernible taste whatsoever. Oh, God. That's the trouble with most American coffee. It's just so weak. Lacking. Have you been to Seattle? No. Yeah. Well, they sort of serve you quadruple... Uh, espressos and now they're at the other end of the uh, uh, oh. scale that'll really wake you up <laughs> mostly it's mostly, cocaine in a cup mostly American <laughs> coffee but anyway I thought that advert was very sexist I loved it it was like watching a mini TV show it's yeah. fantastic yeah. yeah your coffee's terrible <laughs> terrible I mean, what a yeah. thing to say I thought he was going to smack yeah, her yeah. mum you said <laughs> if I said that to my wife I'd get a pot of coffee all over my head <laughs> quite rightly too <laughs> uh, right, it's time now uh, for this, anti-social media. <laughs> yes, this is where we uh, sift through all of the fan mail that's been pouring into me all week on social media. Always very complimentary. Uh, take it away. Here we go. Uh, Kev's mean tweets. <laughs> Mike Graham and Kevin <laughs> O'Shhouse <laughs> are always bickering like an old married couple. <laughs> They're probably in a threesome with Bill Gates. Oh, good <laughs> This is like Dumb and Dumber. Well, if you're going to have a threesome, you have the Dumb and Dumber and even Dumberer or something like that. Uh, well, that's a very insulting, isn't it? Here's the thank you very much. Thanks, yeah. Bill Gates, Bill Gates, Bill Gates. Uh, Talk TV needs to get more presenters. They are working Kevin O'Sullivan far too hard. If he dies, they will be screwed. I think that might actually be a cold <laughs> call. I know. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you very much. <laughs> very nice of you. I now think you means I should give you a raise. Yeah, yeah well, that'll be, <laughs> that'll be the yeah. damn day. <laughs> Let's go to break. <laughs> what just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. Tell me what to do, and within reason, I'll do my level best not to. Like all independent spirits, I don't appreciate being ordered around. So here's my message to the Tarquins and the Phoebes of Just Stop Oil, who demand that everyone thinks exactly like them. You worry about climate change, and I'll worry about the pressing issues affecting the real world right now. Is this an eco-emergency? You believe it is. I don't. So, by all means, throw jigsaw puzzles onto Wimbledon's tennis courts if you imagine that in some way that will help. But don't expect me to even bother to notice. Obviously, chucking orange confetti at newlywed George Osborne and his bride was a major moment in the battle to save the planet. But seriously, folks, what was the point of that? 
What's the point of covering court 18 in bits of cardboard shortly before they speedily clear it up with a leaf blower running onto the cricket pitch at test matches only to be unceremoniously carried off under one arm by wicketkeeper Johnny Bairstow, hurling soup at the plastic coverings that protect classic paintings? Who cares? Spraying car showrooms with orange paint. So what? Really, give it up. No one gives a damn, mainly because we know that these pathetic protests won't make a blind bit of difference. So they resort to blocking roads, not stopping oil, but stopping decent law-abiding citizens getting to work, getting to hospital, getting their kids to school ruining their days. Then what happens? The woke cops stand back and let the gormless green goons get on with it. Now, government ministers and police chiefs want the courts to hand down tougher sentences, to send a message by sending the roadblockers to jail. Just a suggestion? How about 10 years? That'll stop Just Stop Oil. Remember, insulate Britain when we started sending that lot to prison, the whole organisation swiftly disappeared from view. When those two idiots who caused gridlock by climbing the Dartford crossing got banged up, guess what? The M25 demonstrations came to an end quicker than you could say the end of the world is nigh. So if they really want to quash the scourge of disrupting sporting events, Put the virtue signalling halfwits behind bars. They're middle class and middle class people don't like doing bird. And while we're on a roll, memo to the police. Instead of waiting two hours to arrest the lawbreakers who obstruct the King's Highway, pounce on them in two minutes. Then a heavy sentence and next stop Wormwood Scrubs. Tough punishment as a deterrent. Maybe our ludicrously lenient legal system should try it sometime. Call me controversial, but it might just work. Never mind, might. It will work. Now let's just do it. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Listen, here's the thing. Right, so did you see at the weekend uh, George Osborne yeah. getting married yeah. to his... I think her name was Thea Rogers. Yeah. And so they go, oh, it's terrible. They, they disrupted his wedding. <laughs> well, they... they, they Put the some confetti. orange confetti, confetti on. Yeah. on them, yeah. What, what is so <laughs> bad about that? <laughs> but apparently What's the what? person who did it wasn't even part of Just Up Oil. I mean, they well, deny... Well, no, Just Up Oil said that. They, they, yeah, yeah. Well, they, they're denying it. We don't okay. know. Um, I, I actually think that's a terrible thing to do, regardless of what... what the... Throwing confetti at Yeah, no, because they were... Ow! Yeah. No, 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 this they... paper's really no, heavy. No, <laughs> they weren't invited. <laughs> First of all, if you did that at my <laughs> wedding, you will be dragged out by my 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 five hundred black uncles. But everyone else, happy. everyone else is throwing confetti <laughs> at weddings. No, excuse yeah. me. You have, my, you have my permission to throw confetti on me. I don't. What know are you, you throwing at us? <laughs> <laughs> we just got married. What are you throwing? No, I'm just it's I'm confetti. Serious. That is not. What is confetti? <laughs> but I mean, but it, I just think those. Uh, uh, the, by the way, did you see how ancient they were at Wimbledon last yeah. week? Yeah, really old people. <laughs> but they ran around throwing bits of orange paper and jigsaw puzzle bit. Yeah. They bought a centre court jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. I mean, they, they came out with a leaf blower, cleared it up in about 30 seconds and the match yeah. started. Again. What? Yeah. That's no good. I mean, I'm not encouraging demonstrations. I'm not encouraging uh, interrupting George Osborne's wedding. But if you're going to have a demonstration, Put your back into you've got to do better than throwing little yeah. bits of paper. You know what? Who's no going to notice that? No one likes just a poll anymore. At the start, I was like, I see the point. I'll listen to them. I understand it. Really? Now, can't stand them. If they went and if they went to China or even just went to Shell or BPHQs mm. over here, yeah. I'd be like, fine, perfect. Yeah. But stopping us from doing our job, stop us getting around, stop us going to school, whatever, blocking the roads, well, the disrupting is... the tennis. And by the way, who's getting them all these tickets? I can't yeah, get there's... tickets to Wimbledon. Yeah, how... I can't they're get they're tickets. They're great to at getting <laughs> tickets. <laughs> they're they're good, they're good how do they get tickets? I've no idea. I've been trying to get tickets. For <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah. then maybe Just Stop Oil could go into the ticket town yes. <laughs> when we give up on their demonstration. Who wants tickets? <laughs> <laughs> Just stop on Save the planet. Who wants tickets? Come on. <laughs> I mean, you, but you know, they did the same at the, t the test match when Johnny Besto just carried that gun under one arm. One arm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the truth is that their demonstrations now uh, are war off a duck's back. We don't even really notice and them. And their, their yeah. demands are so unreasonable. You can just tell they're just a tantrum group. That's that's literally it. They had the most asinine dem demands you could I ever possibly totally make up. And then 
to just go around terrorising the public. Yeah. What about Keir Starmer last week? He's all going to fairer, <laughs> fairer <laughs> greener deal. We're going to stop all oil and gas. We're going to make it much more of a green country. And they're all going, no, 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 do it now! <laughs> now! Well, I'm, I'm going to do it. No, 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 now! Right now! It's just pathetic. It really is pathetic, but it's all part of the political tapestry and <laughs> politicians want people to vote for you. It's time for Vote For Me. If you thought Jacob Rees-Mogg was annoying now, <laughs> you, sh you should see him when he was 12. And you will, right now. Hopefully by the time I'm 70, when I'm 70, um, I'd love to become Prime Minister. Why? Why? Because um, at that age, you can have made all your millions or billions and you've got plenty of money and you'll have time to spend on politics. I think we should get more normal people to be <laughs> cabinet ministers, I think he don't has you? A point, yeah. Well, what, what a weird kid. What a weird kid. <laughs> Being chef driven around in his nice Rolls Royce there as well. Yeah, well, yeah. you're anyway. <laughs> you're on the, my show, What's Just Happened, which brings me to our next section. It's called The Best of Bad TV. <laughs> Do you like uh, kissing wolves at all, uh, Esther? Uh, I don't make well, this woman it. does. Watch this. <laughs> when wolves greet, they will want to lick inside your mouth. This is perfectly normal for them, and this is what they do to one another on a daily basis. If you can tolerate it, you should allow this, as they will trust you more and can learn everything about you as a person, which includes your body chemistry, <laughs> if you are sick or well, what you have eaten, and also if you are kind and non-threatening to them. <laughs> well, no. uh, I'll tell you, I'm not snogging no. a wolf for you. <laughs> no. Gonna a wolf? Oh, no. no. But you've got a dog, Chasbo. Yes. Do you let Chasbo lick your face? Uh, no, I've never liked dogs licking my face. No. Chas isn't a face licker. OK. He, he, He's a boot licker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say something else there. But yeah, oh, okay. Arse licker. Um, <laughs> what about you then? Uh, do, you don't have a dog, do you? Uh, I don't do you have, have a wolf. A dog. You... I, I don't have a wolf, unfortunately. Uh, and I would never let anything lick my face unless uh, they were paying me for it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, which sort of, sort of brings the show full circle, really, doesn't it? Uh, thank you so much to both of you. I'm throwing you both to the wolves now. <laughs> Thanks to JJ Anasiobi and to Esther Cracker. We'll be back next week with another edition of. What just happened? What just happened? I'm Mike Graham and this is Plank of the Week. Join me every Friday night at 7pm right here on Talk TV for a run through the biggest planks of every single week. You can't miss it. It's time for That Was The Woke That Was. The topical quiz show that goes through all of the wokest stories of the week. She has been fame-hungry from the get-go. Saturdays at 9 on Talk TV.